Welcome, explorers, to the vital aqua springs of the mortal realms, as today we talk about one of the more kind of out there concepts in Age of Sigmar, and that is Aqua Girana. Now, for those of you who are new to Age of Sigmar, or just stepping in a little deeper, Aqua Girana is a bit of water measured in drops, vials, that kind of thing, that function as the currency for the burgeoning cities of order. Now, of course, it's easy to just look at this as just water. And there are certainly different, you know, universes that exist, fictional settings that use water as real currency. You know, my favorite example is Fallout 1, where people use bottle caps as a representation, the currency of water. Because water is so hard to come by, it gives the caps a value so you can go into the water merchants and trade a cap in for some fresh water. That's quite different, though, than using Aqua Giranus itself as a currency. Because unlike any representative currency, like the cap, or even the dollar bill in our real world, that's meant to represent something of value, Aqua Giranus is unique in that it has its own intrinsic value. It is not just normal water. Because there's so much more going on with it. You see, in Age of Sigmar, every realm imbues its magic into every aspect of the landscape. So, for example, if you're in the realm of metal, Chimon, and there's a forest in front of you, that forest is going to be infused with the essence of metal magic. And so you might see the branches and leaves become thick razor wire, and it might be actually quite treacherous to walk through the woods in the realm of metal. There's even like a little small snippet story of like some Duwarden who... Basically, I think they're called the Iron Oak, something like that. Basically, they, they chop down the trees and they're as strong as metal. So they look like they're wearing crappy wooden armor, but it's actually like tough as steel. Another example might be trees in the realm of fire. Actually, they might look like blackened burnt stumps, but they're actually super healthy. They just learn to feed on the ash around them and they kind of take on some of the color and the hue from that. So they look like burnt out stumps, even though they're great. And so you can kind of see like the, the logic, right, of, of how a realm affects the things within it. But what about, say, water from a realm that's largely defined by healing, restoration, growth, that kind of thing? The uses for such a material would be absolutely innumerable. And I want to say here up front that a lot of this lore, in fact, dang near all of it, comes straight out of the uh, Age of Sigmar role-playing game Soulbound. The core book for that is really what establishes Aqua Giorana as the currency of the realms. In fact, it was really eye-opening that entire book and series of books, because they're still making all kinds of supplemental material for it, has really gone out of its way to like exploring different aspects of the mortal realm setting things like this like currency which is just not something that is touched on obviously in the war game age of sigmar but is really important to understanding how these different factions function together and so for the rest of this i want to talk about what are the things that aqua Girana does what makes it intrinsically valuable and then we can understand why it's used as currency so the first one and, and certainly the most obvious is the healing factor and again, this concept is first and foremost introduced in the Soulbound role-playing game because it plays into that game very like, mechanically. And that is to say, Aqua Girana is your money, but you can also consume it for healing. And it's incredibly restorative to the body, allowing heroes to recover from some of the most grievous wounds at a hugely increased speed. This means, again, your money can be directly tied to your ability to survive a mission. I mean, there are also your health potions, is what I'm saying. And it creates a world where every injury that you have has to be looked at with a monetary eye. And that can kind of go into some weird places, not necessarily for Soulbound, but if we consider that, right? Imagine a band of traitors gets attacked by orcs, and they survive, but they're just really beat up. Well, all of a sudden, that group has to ask the question, well, how many of us actually need to be, you know, quote unquote, emergency healed? How many can just sit there in agony and then make our way to our destination? Because you start to see the frailty of everyone that you're connected with, with a currency value. Your money is your health potion, which makes it on one hand great because the more successful you are in life and the more money that you accrue and the riches that you find yourself in, all of that is tied directly to your health and well-being. 
It also means that if you're broken destitute, you better be real careful. Like, better wrap yourself in bubble wrap kind of careful because if you're broke and you don't have any way of healing yourself, it only goes downhill. So it's a very interesting concept to tie physical health with monetary currency. But there's a second part of this magic material, or aqua Guerrera, that I think is really cool. And it's mentioned very, very briefly, but I suspect we'll see more of it soon. And that is how it speeds up growth. That is to say, literally pouring money into the dirt will make the land prosper with life. As we've seen in the book Dominion by Darius Hinks, uh, the next chapter of Age of Sigmar lore seems to be really centered around the forces of order going out and expanding, trying uh, basically to expand civilizations across the realms who don't really want to be contained and restricted. Now, a big part of that idea is the Dawnbringer Crusades, where cities of Sigmar will send out huge caravans and armies to go settle new outposts that can one day turn into settlements and cities. Well, a large part of the success of these crusades is in rapid deployment. That is, that the realms are so dangerous by their own nature that if you're going to leave the gates of a city of Sigmar, you need to travel fast, get to where you need to be, and build a fort immediately because you will be attacked. Like there's no question about that. You're going to have to defend yourself and being attacked while you're on the road, not great. But with that comes a problem. How much food and supplies do you bring and how much do you leave behind? Because the amount of stuff that you bring is directly tied to how fast you can go. Crusades that carry too much will be slowed down by having to basically move all these, the cattle and beasts of burden and carts and all that kind of stuff. Those that pack light will arrive faster, but they'll need to be able to start farming like immediately. Because otherwise they'll get to their destination and just run out of food and die. And knowing how hostile the realms are in some places, this is not always possible. Like in real life, it can take an extremely long time to till and work bad soil into becoming fertile, certainly fertile for mass farming, right? I mean, if you wanna like actually have food for an entire city that you wanna found, you need to get to that right away. And so there's always that push and pull of like, how much do we bring and how much can we count on the grounds being sustainable for life once we arrive there? But there's another option. What if we go the route of dumping water for the realm of life all over it, right? Let's, let's say you're in Akshi, okay? The ground is, is described as fairly hostile. It's kind of hard to farm. It's a lot of ashy waste muck all over the ground. But if you put the water from the realm of life, its magics infuse deep into the earth and aid in that initial crop season. From there, you can get fertilizer going and boom, you basically can give yourself a head start. Which again, is super awesome, but it now ties your income to your health and the community's ability to prosper. So this could absolutely be something, you know, if a, a trader or something wanted to join a Dawnbringer Crusade, they can say, hey, listen, you know, I'm not going to contribute much in terms of defense or, you know, military application, but I have, you know, six spheres of Aqua Guerrero that I'm going to bring and I'm going to establish farming. And so that could be his job, what he brings to the puzzle of starting a new city. And that's a huge deal because that's a massive monetary investment that might go nowhere. But at the same time, it also represents an ability to heal wounded soldiers and, again, start crops to feed those same soldiers later on. So that's absolutely a reason. Oh, yeah, I want this guy in my crusade. Not just because he's rich, but because that richness is the means for healing and production of food. Now, when I read this, I was immediately skeptical because I was like, okay, but water is a very inconvenient currency. Can we just agree that that's kind of a pain? Um, and one of the things that the Soulbound book goes out of its way to explain is that everybody carries a pipit with them. That little, like, little suction thing where you can kind of count out drops of water, like in a science program or cooking or something like that. I just imagine like a giant turkey baster for rich people, but essentially that's how they measure out Aqua Guirana. And, and that it's essentially becomes their wallet, if you will, is how many drops you can fit into a pipit, and then there's a sphere and a vial and all that kind of stuff. 
standardized measurements. Uh, I'm going to assume, based on that, that Aqua Gearanus does not evaporate. Otherwise, we would all just be kind of hosed. But that is neither here nor there. I have a few things I want to talk about when it comes to the implications of having Aqua Gearana be a currency, and we're going to do that right after a quick word from today's sponsor. Hey Wargamers, Doug here, and I have something to improve your hobby no matter what game you play. The Level Up is a game table system designed to raise and increase your gaming space in an easy and efficient way. You don't have to buy a $5,000 mega uber gaming table of excellence kind of a thing. Because the Level Up uses a system of interlocking tiles raised up 6 inches by stainless steel non-slip legs. And because of the different options you have on where you put those leg mounts in, you can actually increase the size of your gaming surface. So here's what I mean. My dining room table is a 42 inch wide circle. However, I took the skirmish variant of the level up and I was able to turn that into a perfect three foot by four foot gaming table. And there are actually five sizes that this system supports. Now, in addition to having the very common, you know, sizes of boards that we would play on, as I said before, the level up raises your uh, gaming space up six inches. And if you're tall like me at 6'3", uh, it's a blessing for your back. In addition, each copy of your level up, no matter what size you get, comes with these really nifty clips. So if you do put, say, a D&D map or, of course, your neoprene gaming mat that a lot of us use in this hobby, you can clip it and secure it there so there's no sliding around whatsoever. But what's interesting is that even if you already have your own six foot by four foot table, the fact that it's now raised up means you can use the real estate underneath your table. So you're actually gaining room for all of your reference material, your measuring stuff, where uh, dead units can go. All those kinds of things fit really well underneath there. And so I even put a battle tome sideways so you can see just how much room there is. The level up crushed its Kickstarter doing exceptionally well. And now that product is fully hitting the market all funded and ready to go. So if you would like one, go ahead and check it out in the link down below. Now back to the video. All right. So why is this so cool? Well, the idea of seeing health and community health, meaning like crops and foods and that kind of stuff in, in a monetary way sounds bad, but it also works the other way around. Someone might have some aqua Uranus. If they're in good health, why not build a farm and start selling crops? Why not help fund an expedition? Meaning because there's other uses for it other than just being money, it has intrinsic value because it's magical properties. And like I said earlier, it doesn't technically represent anything else as a result. But also I think in truth, in the eyes of citizens of any city of Sigmar, Aqua Guirana certainly can represent a very tangible measurement of hope. It could be hope for financial safety, of course, because it's currency. Uh, hope for a healthy and prosperous life, because if you have some in the bank, whenever anything happens to you or your family, you can now heal yourselves up. And also, of course, hope to grow elsewhere from the ground, where you can actually fund whole new farms and farming communities and build cities of Sigmar with this incredible material. And there's something about that that I just absolutely love. And I like it enough to overlook the idea of carrying around a pippet as a wallet. Because I'll be honest with you, uh, if like the way I treat my phone or my wallet is any indication of how I would treat a pippet, I think would be smashed in two seconds and I would be broken destitute. All in all, I think Aqua Guranus is a cool addition to the setting. And again, it wasn't really even discussed until the role-playing game, which, uh, you know, I think is a wonderful game. I've played several rounds of it. Um, had an absolute blast on my last campaign. And it's just interesting to think about the implications of what currency would do. Like, what would happen to the world if, say, the dollar bills in my pocket literally were tied to my health and well-being and the well-being of my community and our ability to stay sustainable? Now, I know that they are in the sense that I can invest that money into those kinds of things, but it's not the same. It's not the same as like a literal health potion in your pocket. And so I like when adventurers have to make those tough decisions of like, well, do I use this? Do I save it? You know, those kinds of things. And it just makes a very interesting set of choices that you as players in Soulbound have to make, which would then lead into larger choices of how the world functions and how cool and how deep and honestly a little bit disturbing the decisions that all these characters have to make. I thought it was really rad and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. So leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you next time. Happy Wargaming.